and welcome to the Absolute Recap Biology Edition, where we aim to maximize your understanding and minimize your need for memorization. Each episode will recap content, skills, and test-taking tips to help you succeed in May. I'm your host, Melanie Kingett, and your recap starts now. Hi, and welcome to the Absolute Recap Biology Edition. Today's episode will recap homeostasis. Let's zoom out. We're in Unit 4, Cell Communication and Cell Cycle. Topic 4.5. Our big idea is energetics. Rawr! Scared ya, didn't I? I was scared. Maybe not scared, but possibly startled. You looked up briefly or tilted your head to one side, perhaps. You weren't expecting that noise on this podcast. Congrats! You responded to a stimuli, an essential part of maintaining homeostasis. You have the ability to respond on so many levels, molecular, cellular, physiological, and behavioral. Let's zoom in. One of the characteristics that all living things share is the ability to respond to stimuli. These stimuli, or signals, might be external in the organism's environment and perceived through an organism's sense organs. Sounds, sights, touch, and smell may all trigger a response by you. Walk in the door to the smell of chocolate chip cookies baking, Mm. and I'm pretty sure your first reaction will be to head to the kitchen. Stimuli can also be internal from a cell's own biochemistry. Bacterial invader, white blood cells initiate a coordinated antibody response. Either way, cells, the enzymes they contain, and the multicellular organisms they form function best within a specific range of conditions. I like to refer to this as their Goldilocks zone. Everything isn't the same from one cell to another, but it is just right for optimal functioning. Maintaining these internal conditions, despite external and internal changes, is the basis of homeostasis. There are two types of feedback mechanisms used by organisms, negative and positive. No, not bad and good, but named after their associations to an organism's set point or internal set of conditions. I see what you mean. Negative brings conditions back to normal range, whereas positive brings conditions further past the normal range. Negative, normal, positive, past. If the response reverses the stimulus, then the system is operating by negative feedback. This often results in the stopping or slowing down of a process in order to return to a set point, maintaining homeostasis. Two great examples of negative feedback are maintaining body temperature and keeping blood sugar levels constant. When you're too cold, you shiver, but too hot, hot, the response is likely heavy breathing and sweating, each of which triggers other physiological responses to trap or release heat depending on circumstance. The goal? Return to baseline, 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. We will need to recruit a few organs to control and maintain glucose concentration in the blood. The liver stores sugar as glycogen, which can be converted into glucose when blood sugar level is low, and the pancreas releases the hormone glucagon. However, if blood sugar levels increase, like if you had a big pasta dinner, then the pancreas secretes insulin, signaling the liver to store excess glucose as glycogen, and balance returns. It should be noted that variation of range is normal, and moving beyond that range is also normal, as long as it's temporary for negative feedback. Hi there, producer Brad here. I wasn't always what you would call the best student. In fact, a fellow student once complimented me by saying how much my illustration skills had progressed over the course of our first semester philosophy class, where I may or may not have gotten a D. However, I did do very well in all of my online courses, so much so that my grandfather said that maybe I should avoid in-person interactions altogether. But the point is, everybody learns differently, and sometimes all you need to understand a difficult topic is a different perspective. The Absolute Recap live virtual classrooms allow you to collect collaborate with AP students from all over the world. Each 90-minute lesson is hosted through Zoom by your favorite podcasting teachers and focuses on specific course topics. Our teachers use visual aids, provide opportunities for student practice and Q&A, plus they give you a downloadable study packet. Our virtual classroom is a great opportunity to review for tests throughout the year as well as prepare for the exam in May. Reserve a seat for one class or book your seat for the year with our virtual classroom bundle and save. Now, back to the recap. In contrast, positive feedback is a mechanism that results in the amplification or growth of an output signal. This moves the organism farther from the set point, disrupting homeostasis. Positive pushes past normal range. 
This is more rare than negative feedback, but sometimes greater change is necessary. We see this with lactation in mammals, where suckling stimulates more milk production. This is also seen with fruit ripening, with ethylene gas production triggering more fruits to also ripen. This is the foundation of the paper bag trick. When you place an unripe tomato in a bag, trapping ethylene gas and causing the fruit to ripen faster. Now I know what you're thinking, but you're wrong. Yes, tomato is a fruit. All right, get out. But that's for another episode. Time for unit connections. Homeostasis is a large part of Unit 2, as cells maintain internal conditions through transport mechanisms across membranes. Molecules are constantly moving, which causes concentrations to continually shift. Homeostasis also correlates to Unit 7, natural selection. Mechanisms that are conserved or diverged across related organisms suggests common ancestry or evolutionary change due to selective pressures. It also connects to Unit 8, ecology, with many examples of organisms responding to their environment, such as phototropism, taxis and kinesis, as well as nocturnal activity. All right, what about the exam? There may be questions about a disruption to the homeostasis, whether it be toxin, salinity, or temperature. You will need to draw conclusions, cause and effect, predict the outcome. Or maybe you'll need to analyze a negative feedback loop with hormones and structures you've never heard of, like calcitonin and the thyroid. We've said this before, but we'll say it again. Focus on the big picture concept and apply it to new circumstances. Those unknown terms are just placeholders in the biological equation. To recap, homeostasis is the maintenance of constant internal conditions despite internal and external changes. The timing and coordination of biological mechanisms involved in reproduction, growth, and dynamic homeostasis depend on living things reacting to environmental signals. Maintaining homeostasis is achieved by negative feedback and disrupted by positive feedback mechanisms. Coming up next on the Absolute Recap Biology Edition, mitosis. Today's question of the day is about organelles. What paramecium organelle pumps out excess water when the cell is placed in a hypotonic environment. For the answer to the question of the day, please follow us on Instagram at The Absolute Recap. That's the A-P-S-O-L-U-T-E Recap. Check out our website, theabsoluterecap.com, for episode schedules, study guides, virtual tutoring, and to sign up for our virtual classroom. The Absolute Recap is produced by Brad Kingett with music by Zach Caruso. Today's episode was written by me, Melanie Kingett. Thanks for subscribing, and don't forget to rate and review wherever you get podcasts. Time's up, pencils down. Thank you for listening to the Absolute Recap Biology Edition. AP is a registered trademark of the College Board. Copyright 2020, Absolute Recap, LLC, all rights reserved.